Hi folks, this is Adnan, your host from Exchange IT Pro. In today's webcast, I'm going to show you how to use Exchange Server Role Requirement Calculator. Uh, this is the latest release, version 7.9. It's both for Exchange 2013 and 2016. And this is used to size your Exchange environment. Let's say if you want to set up a new server that it has that number of mailboxes you need, the quota size. So you put all that into the input field and it will give you the information such as what number of CPUs, memory you need. So I'll download it and walk you through how to use uh, this tool so it will give you a better understanding if you are sizing up your environment. So let's get started. Download it. View download. Okay, open the folder. What should we download? Let's see. Let's go back. Okay. So Actually, I was supposed to use on my Windows, not on the Mac, so when we Excel 2016. Alrighty. Okay, so this is the calculator itself. So before you do so, or in other words, when you are at this stage, you already have some sort of planning. You're not just putting the numbers. Of course, you want to play around, you can put those, but when you are here, you have a plan to set up a server or your or exchange organization. So, you already know that number of mailboxes, what type of high availability do you need or not. So I'll walk you through some of them and I'll, you know, at the end of the video, you'll have a better understanding. So let's see what does it say. Exchange version. We can select 2013 and 2016. As I said, we have default global catalog server. It moves to the organization. Today have 64 bits. So we are not going to change this. Server virtualization. See, by default, Microsoft Exchange team set it to no. And I would also go with the no because there has to be a legitimate reason why you want to virtualize it. Uh, you don't want to just virtualize it because the sake of the virtualization, not everyone has that. And you also don't want to virtualize two virtual exchange server on the one single host. So if that single host goes down, there's no reason to virtualize it. it there's no high availability. So I've seen those things, bad practices. Uh, you want to deploy high availability means yes or no if you do yes then of course there are options but if you do no then some of the options will disappear see on the right side on the below everything is gone so it make it if you want to have a tool or you want to have a, you want to deploy a single server deployment for mailbox you want to select no or i'll select yes and all these are popped up uh, number of mailboxes well how many number of mailboxes per DAG it depends what number of mailboxes in your organization so if you have 100 mailboxes you don't need those seven servers uh, if you have let's say I'll just throw the number um, 1000 mailbox let's say so I'm not gonna touching it now because Microsoft just put those number if they were let's say 10,000 mailboxes or 20,000 this is their you know these are just the random numbers so let's um, okay let me scroll down see the number of mailboxes yeah they put 80,000 mailboxes so if you look at for this 80,000 mailboxes uh, they want to have this number of servers 
number of database availability groups uh, HA copies are three within the DAG lag copy is one secondary data center HA data copies are one number of lag copies again is one zero percent data overhead so these are the default value they have set it up so we can change it and I'll show you the change it but in the message profile if you look at it uh, you need to know you know what's the what your organization type is so you know uh, average mailbox average message size is 75k I've seen organization in the music industry they have a message size 200k so this really this change you know number of message back and forth 200 messages you could have average it could be average uh, 100 or it could go to 300 uh, initial mailbox size how much initial mailbox size you're gonna give it to your end user uh, it start from 2 gigs to and the archive mailbox is 10 gigs uh, retention I deleted item retention how many days you want to keep your items in the deleted items so these things you have to put and you design it but the mailbox quota size you may want to check with your teams or business different holders stakeholder like marketing sales ask them hey or ask your you know high, higher up or organization level do you want to give a standard mailbox size throughout the organization or you want to keep it different mailbox to different uh, uh, business units but today if you compare with office 365 it offers 50 gigs of mailbox so two gigs is nothing to compare so you want to have a set some certain criteria uh, throughout your organization it could be 2 gigs or 10 gigs whatever the case would be but keep in mind the more you give the quota the more hard drive you need and hard drives are cheap today and then there's a discussion of uh, RAID versus the JBOD we'll look into that uh, again the size so let's just um, see what this default configuration looks like and whenever we put input if you come to the distribution tab this is the most favorite tab I have I like it because it, it, it simulate the environment it tells me the distribution of databases the database copies primary secondary copy and then again primary secondary copies three copies we are talking about in this case so it, it, it so the one with the dotted red are the leg copies so if we were to change and look at the number of databases it has created 126 databases so we can change that but before I do that let's say volume requirement so it's a predefined I'm just walking over when we'll compare and change the mailbox size and we'll see the difference so here it says that each volume uh, So this is per volume and this is per configuration. Let's see, we have database 33, 36. We have, here we go. So here, if you look at it, this is what we need per server, per total. I believe 32 terabyte per DAG 46 terabyte per environment 46 terabyte of this storage is needed so this is how it and it also tells you how much volume you need uh, for DB1 to DB4 is 3.6 terabyte you need to host these databases 36 databases here it talks about uh, per server so for well, each and every server you need this much this size of uh, uh, volume total recommended volume per server 11 which include the volume for the la log and all those things so 11 volume you need number of servers here it's, so it's a per server configuration basically so you have seven server I think uh, so you have to multiply that um, role requirement if I go back to this tab 
I want to make sure about the maximum memory. So 80,000 environment mailboxes. Number of mailboxes per database is 63 only. Because remember, we use initial mailbox size 2 gigs and archive is 10 gigs. Um, number of databases per DAG is there number of copies per server 36 copies yeah 96 so this is the criteria uh, where it says the maximum memory on any server as per Microsoft best practice should not go more than 96 gigs of RAM so that I was looking for so you may have to scale out what I mean add more server but each server should not go more than 26 or uh, I mean 96 gigs of memory and these are the CPU requirement just type is JBOD architecture so we can change it so now let's go back and change from 80,000 to 8,000 and see what difference do we see here So only 42, they were like 136 something. Uh, volume requirements has drastically reduced from 3.6 terabyte to 1 terabyte. DB size has gone down. Number of mailbox is still 19 because of the size. If I change the size here uh, to gigs, so let's say 2 gigs of archive. And I'll go back. So database size remains the same 24 gigs RAM now go back to the volume uh, 254 gigs so you see the difference right uh, database size has gone down again number of volumes are only 5 total volume required per server under a gig under a terabyte so if you play around with this, uh, you will have a better understanding uh, about your environment. 24 gigs of memory, JBAR is still the JBAR here. Uh, we used, uh, again, we did not change the number of servers. It's still the same. Database availability group which says 10, we can change it, we can just make it 1 for this 8000 mailbox or we can make it 2 depending. See it has changed. Yeah, if I do use 2, uh, let's say. So it also matters if I, if I change the database availability group from 1 to 2, so it reduces the number of memory. Because within a one DAG, you keep copies here, you two DAGs, and they have to copy of each other depending number of servers you have. So that also matters. If I increase the number of servers, this will also change. Yeah. So you can put any, let's say, try a different number, 9. Okay. Now, let's say about 13. What if I put 5? Okay. Yeah, because the servers and the copies are all have sharing the data. So reduce the number definitely will increase the number of the memory, 64 gigs. So you have to play with these numbers that because the scenario here is JBOD and JBOD you're using as individual servers. So basically, uh, these are seven physical servers hosting those mailbox copies, and we are talking about three copies here one DAG, one leg copies within the DAG, one in the secondary data center so you may need it and in you know the in the JBOD you need leg copies if you're not doing the backup so you you have to consider all that uh, 
or you can or you can go to your existing uh, storage area network uh, sand based solution where you may not need so this many copies because you're already achieving the redundancy in the disk level uh, so you may want to opt for the traditional uh, storage design here we're using exchange native uh, data protection for the JBOD so uh, disk size processor core spec in I have not put it because this is an example but if you're doing your actual deployment you must need to know your spec into rate value to get the exact uh, calculation for your CPU and log application peak time you can change it what's the peak time in the morning time and afternoon whatsoever um, that's being said uh, in a nutshell now you um, have a better understanding when you put this data into the storage requirement calculator it will give you what your environment looks like and here are some of the things uh, like site resiliency we selected yes uh, site distribution model active active if you do active and passive it will change the, your distribution but today is most commonly used active active and multiple DAG if you want to do it multiple DAG we can do that uh, our PO is 24 hours uh, leg copies and all this configuration maximum database size configuration default you can change it you can customize it here the database size let's say I believe 200 something or you can change it basically and customize it that's hey you know I want to have a mailbox size for up to uh, 200 gigs or 400 then it will change accordingly and this will also when you increase the database size we increase the number of mailboxes within that database and then unique database symmetrical data so we said we keep everything calculate uh, auto because let exchange calculator decide it because from the exchange team but it doesn't mean that you cannot change it it will have the same aspect ratio but you can do it manual setting so in a nutshell uh, I hope uh, you get the idea how to use this storage role requirement calculator and keep trying to play with as many as time as you can because every time uh, you put those different numbers it will give you a better understanding and better idea using this tool and this is one of the best uh, tool you know but this is the only tool and the best tool from Microsoft to exchange for server role requirement so Credits to Microsoft for and Ross Smith for designing this tool and his whole team. Um, and that's being said, I hope you enjoyed this webcast. Uh, if you have any questions, send it to Microsoft team. Don't send it to me. Send it to them. It's their email. It's their mention here. Send it to them. And if you like this webcast, uh, put your comments. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, thank you so much.